would like to introduce you to some of the activities that the nuclear knowledge management section conducts. So I had a really brief introduction on Monday, but now we, uh, we will let John de Grobois, the section head of the nuclear knowledge management section, going through uh, um, each of the activities in a little bit more detail. In reality, we have a really broader range of, of uh, projects and, and initiatives, so it would not be possibly conceivable to have uh, a very thorough description of each of, uh, of these projects. But it's just to give you an idea, and we will be happy, uh, Monica, myself, uh, Andrei, uh, Anatoly, to go through more detail individually if, if you are interested in, in uh, specific activities. And in addition, in the contents and uh, support material that is uh, on CLP4Net, you will find a list of publications as well and links. So I think we can start. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John de Grobois. I'm the section head for nuclear knowledge management at the IEA. My presentation is about the nuclear knowledge management section. Uh, it's an overview of our program and a few key highlights. So to begin with, our program covers three major focus areas. We develop and disseminate methodology in the form of publications uh, to the member states in the area of nuclear knowledge management and uh, provide services and support to nuclear organizations in the application and implementation of, of that methodology in the form of NKM programs. We support member states in the area of nuclear education and networking in nuclear education. And finally, and uh, in, in uh, support of the other uh, first two areas, we help in the understanding and application of information technology and in particular knowledge organization systems and modern technologies like semantic technology and uh, data informatics and so on to, to uh, ensure the uh, efficiency and uh, maximum utilization of our knowledge base in the nuclear sector. Our program covers off uh, many, many initiatives that are going in parallel. We have a team of about eight uh, professional staff and a number of admins and each scientific secretary is uh, undertaking typically five or six initiatives in, in parallel. So I can't possibly cover off all of our program areas today, but I'll try and highlight a few uh, particular initiatives that I think you'll find of interest. Before I do that, I want to uh, just touch on a few real basics to help you understand the IEA context in terms of the NKM program. We have to deal with uh, a wide variety of counterparts and uh, counterpart organizations who have very different perspectives on what uh, their priorities, uh, interests, and understanding of knowledge management uh, are, and um, this covers the whole nuclear life cycle. So depending on the particular organization and uh, where their, uh, their country is in, in uh, energy uh, program planning and implementation, uh, they may have very different interests in KM. This can be at a national or even an international level. Uh, it can be, and often is, at an organizational level, how to implement a KM program. And of course, we all are acutely aware of the issues around uh, managing individual uh, and expert knowledge, uh, particularly in, in light of uh, attrition and uh, retirement issues. So the, the CUBE helps us to see these different, um, I guess, areas of concern and scope of concern. And there's also the added dimension on the right side, which is the focus area. And here, knowledge management can take us into uh, issues around human knowledge, so uh, people-centric, uh, tacit knowledge issues, our experiential knowledge as experts, uh, process knowledge, which is methodological knowledge, how we do what we do, our procedures, our uh, embedded uh, work practices, and so on. And finally, the technology itself, the underlying science and engineering that uh, forms the uh, basics, uh, the fundamentals of our realized plant designs. In the NCAM program, we help nuclear organizations understand and progress in their NCAM program maturity. And we have a simple model we use to help uh, understand the, their circumstances and to move forward. The, uh, level zero uh, of, of uh, NCAM maturity is 
typically uh, reflected in uh, a lot of organizations that are new to knowledge management where it tends to be ad hoc, uh, it's not implemented as a, an organization-wide program and it's driven by a few champions or uh, internal stakeholders who really uh, understand and want to uh, bring resolution to critical issues. Where a lot of member state nuclear organizations are today is to, uh, in, in the process or have recently achieved a, uh, an evolution or gradual development towards what we call level one, which is a programmatic approach to knowledge management. And they have uh, implemented an organization-wide policy and are uh, attempting to mature this within the organization. Where we want to get with nuclear organizations is to really have a, an embedded uh, KM program and a systemic approach uh, to knowledge management. So knowledge processes within the firm or the organization are, are uh, optimized for uh, overall uh, organization performance. So in terms of safety and economics, we're achieving uh, high utilization of, of the organizational knowledge. And this takes us from uh, uh, knowledge hoarding culture to a knowledge sharing culture, which is the, the lower axis, and on the uh, vertical axis we have a shift from being more reactive to knowledge management issues to being more proactive. So this simple model helps nuclear organizations understand where they are and where they need to get and understand uh, not only the benefits but perhaps how to implement uh, measures and uh, uh, assessment tools uh, to, to help them through this uh, maturity progression. Last year, in 2016, we had the third nuclear uh, knowledge management conference here in Vienna, and I'm happy to say we had very strong involvement from the UK, and we're grateful of that. Uh, there's many areas where you're leading, and uh, organizations like NI uh, obviously play a very important role as a professional association to uh, leverage up the uh, competencies and contribute significantly to knowledge management in, in your uh, member state. So uh, the, the conference was, uh, we think, a big success. It involved all departments within the agency and helped to uh, create more awareness and essentially change the thinking about knowledge management here at the IEA. Another interesting program is our schools, and we do these in conjunction, a uh, long-term partnership with the International Center of Theoretical Physics, and uh, that's at Trieste in Italy. Uh, we have two uh, very distinct schools, the Nuclear Knowledge Management School, which is a one-week format, and the Nuclear Energy Management School, which is a two-week format. The Nuclear Energy Management School is done in conjunction with many other sections and departments within the agency and is a very broad-based uh, program covering uh, all of the significant issues around nuclear energy, what makes it unique and particularly challenging, and helps young professionals understand the context of their uh, particular organization or profession within the sector. We also have a new initiative within the section to develop an advanced workshop for knowledge management practitioners and uh, this is to help build uh, a bit of a technical community of practice around knowledge management. And I'll talk a little bit more about community practice in a minute. Another important initiative over the last three, four years has been supported by the Japanese uh, extra budgetary funding we get from their uh, Ministry of Economic Trade and Industry is the International Nuclear Management Academy. The focus of uh, INMA is a uh, collaboration of uh, universities with nuclear engineering faculties who are keen to uh, provide master's level education for nuclear technology management. And this is a heavy emphasis on developing the management competencies necessary for the nuclear sector. So we're, in a, uh, to use a, a cliche, we're managerizing uh, engineers and nuclearizing engineers for the nuclear sector. The uh, INMA is a, a cooperation amongst uh, about 20 universities to develop common requirements, to uh, share approaches and expertise and e-learning resources, and in some cases even to collaborate on these programs uh, internationally. So we're at the IEA uh, facilitating that and ensuring uh, high quality in uh, what we call NTM, Nuclear Technology Management Master's degree programs. 
Another important initiative for us over the last three, four years is uh, the development of uh, online platform to support e-learning, and this is a, a learning management system environment. It's based on open source Moodle software, which is very widely used. And uh, in fact, we encourage member state organizations and the nuclear education networks to uh, deploy similar platforms. But we are uh, happy to report that uh, it's become the agency-wide internal platform and is now being used to deliver a tremendous volume of agency learning resources uh, to the member states in, in various forms. So it's uh, instructor-led training as well as self-directed learning. We in the NKM section also provide an ongoing service to member states upon request, and this comes in the form of our Knowledge Management Assist Visits, or KMAVs, as you may have heard them called. And here we uh, work with our counterpart to uh, help them better understand the particular issues and challenges. Uh, this is the, the management team in particular at the nuclear organization. Often it's a nuclear power plant or a licensed facility. Sometimes we visit regulators, but these are uh, uh, upon request and we will assemble a, an expert international team and uh, come work with your facility for uh, about a week long visit. It's uh, very much a win-win and uh, um, sharing best practices uh, approach to the visit. Uh, so it's done in a collegial, uh, friendly manner. Uh, various uh, uh, tailorings or forms of KMABs exist, but one in particular I draw your attention to is uh, knowledge management assist visits to universities. And in particular for nuclear engineering programs, we again do uh, peer review uh, assessments and uh, these are uh, now being called University Program Peer Review Assessments, or UPRA missions, uh, and are, are becoming a, sort of a mainstay for supporting developing countries uh, and the, um, I guess, evolution or maturation of their nuclear education programs. We support several uh, IAEA facilitated nuclear education networks. These are regional networks and uh, they include, include the Asian network, ANET, the uh, uh, South African network, AFRINEST, um, the Latin American network, LANET, and just recently STARNET, which is uh, Eastern Europe and uh, Central Asia. And these are very active, engaged uh, networks with many uh, university professors involved who are directly involved in, in nuclear education. It allows a, a forum and a mechanism for uh, professional networking, for resource sharing, and um, I guess best practice dissemination. We also work closely with other established networks uh, around the globe and uh, in general promote uh, interaction and cooperation amongst them. So this is a, quite an important activity and uh, very uh, high leverage in terms of its benefits uh, to member states. Another important area for us is, uh, in general, supporting technical communities of practice. And communities of practice are a very powerful engine for knowledge capture, knowledge transfer, preservation and sharing, and in, in many uh, specialist domains. There are a number of uh, TCOPs, as we call them, throughout the agency, and uh, these engage member state technical communities on uh, quite a wide range of, of issues. Um, the role of NKM is to support these uh, groups where we can with uh, common technical solutions, uh, ITIS uh, platform solutions, um, such as knowledge organization systems, application of semantic technology, linked data, uh, portals, repositories, and uh, similar uh, type solutions. So we, we try and help uh, across the agency where we can. And in addition, we have our own dedicated uh, NKM community of practice, and uh, this is uh, very specifically focused on KM practitioners. So we're continuing to uh, work with regional knowledge management uh, communities, as well as uh, link them together internationally in uh, uh, active forums. Another dimension of our program that's evolved over the last two years in cooperation with the Technical Cooperation Department is the fostering of national stakeholder networks around human resource and knowledge development. And 
this is a logical extension of regional nuclear education networks, but it's to work with their stakeholders, uh, mostly nationally, but in some cases regionally. And there are several uh, very uh, good and successful examples of how um, useful and impactful these uh, stakeholder networks can be and uh, how they can uh, improve uh, the outcomes uh, of the nuclear education networks nationally. So we help to capture and uh, disseminate uh, good practices in this area and TC has recognized this as a, a very important aspect of achieve, achieving a sustainable national nuclear education system. So they're uh, uh, keen to work with us to um, promote this as a, uh, a general approach in developing countries. Uh, an important uh, dimension or aspect of this is to um, work with uh, these stakeholder networks nationally through a, a new process we call ECAP. It's uh, the National Education Capability Assessment and Planning Methodology and we're about to publish a document, a guideline on this, but uh, essentially it's IEA facilitating a number of missions with uh, member state stakeholders uh, that may include the uh, heads of universities, the Minister of Energy or um, Education, and uh, the national labs, uh, industry representatives in, in the country who are interested in nuclear education. So this may be a uh, medical community or uh, transportation, agricultural applications, and so on. Uh, we use the agency's influence to bring the stakeholders together to help develop an awareness of the, the benefits, the common issues and challenges, and a strategic uh, vision, a common uh, long-term plan of where they want to be uh, as a country with their national nuclear education program and help them move down that path. But it's, it's to foster uh, ownership and self-direction within the member state. So again, TC uh, program is very supportive of, of this new initiative. Within the section, we also have a coordinated research project that's focused on sustainable nuclear education. And uh, some of the re research topics are uh, itemized here. Uh, this includes, uh, I believe, eight uh, funded research projects with developing country um, participants and about six uh, develop, developed country uh, uh, research agreements uh, in, in parallel. We're hoping to uh, dovetail uh, work in the CRP with the uh, EC funded uh, ANET project. There's a lot of uh, complementarity in, in the ANET program and working with ENN to uh, basically uh, share and cooperate where um, both uh, projects are uh, uh, willing and interested to do so. Over the last two years, it's um, been requested on a, a number of occasions that we help member states uh, better understand and manage design knowledge and uh, over the entire nuclear life cycle. So this is uh, very much a core nuclear knowledge management issue uh, associated with licensed facilities but it's uh, understanding all of the various design artifacts, um, everything from uh, the... Uh Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John de Grobois. I'm the section head for nuclear knowledge management at the IEA. My presentation is about design knowledge and uh, over the entire nuclear life cycle. So this is uh, very much a core nuclear knowledge management issue. Uh, associated with licensed facilities, but it's uh, understanding all of the Sorry, we had uh, a little ish technical issue. Let's, I will try and uh, load a different format of the video so that we can restart from, from this step. Yes, but we did. We have a, we, yeah. we should have a different. Yes, but we should have a different. Yeah. Yeah. How come it's not here? But it's so, okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I will. It's the video. Yeah. What's, what's the problem? Yeah. No, it, we didn't, it didn't show the, the, the additional slides, you know? It 
morning, ladies and gentlemen. My name is. Just click the next slide. It's design knowledge management. After many design knowledge. For the last two years, it's um, been requested on a, a number of occasions that we okay. help member states uh, better understand and manage Volume. design knowledge and, uh, over the entire nuclear life cycle. So this is uh, very much a core nuclear knowledge management issue uh, associated with licensed facilities. But it's uh, understanding all of the various design artifacts, um, everything from uh, the, uh, the drawings to the fundamental requirements to uh, safety uh, cases to uh, facility uh, condition assessments, uh, all of the artifacts that are produced uh, throughout the life cycle and understanding what's required to uh, maintain them effectively uh, to support the ongoing uh, integrity of the facility and the economics and safety uh, of operations. Uh, right through to decommission. So there are uh, many challenging aspects here because of the long timelines, the complexity, multidisciplinary nature of the information, and uh, both the explicit and tacit knowledge has to be managed in an effective way. So uh, many member states are finding this a very challenging topic, and we as a section are working to develop guidance in, in the area and uh, training and other support services to uh, disseminate best practices. And quite related to that is uh, underlying technology that can be used to support design knowledge management, and in particular, plant information models, or PIM technology, which uh, in, in nuclear is um, akin to uh, what's uh, being applied in, in uh, other sectors like the uh, building uh, industry, and there they call it BIM building information management. But the uh, advances that have been made in the last 10 years in this area uh, include enterprise application software and uh, extensions of uh, 3D computer uh, drafting and design software that allow a much more um, integrated framework to uh, manage all the various forms and representations of, uh, of uh, design and facility information uh, over the entire life cycle. So PIM is a, an emerging technology. It's very strategic and very uh, beneficial in terms of cost management and economics. Uh, however, it's, uh, it's challenging because depending on where you are in the life cycle, uh, your requirements for PIM and uh, the applications for it uh, tend to vary. It's still an emerging uh, uh, topic and uh, technology in the nuclear sector. And uh, finally, just draw to your attention the importance of managing the risks of uh, knowledge loss in nuclear organizations, and in particular around competency management, we have developed within the section two guide documents. One uh, provides uh, a top-down view, an organizational uh, view to map and uh, take inventory of the competency requirements for the organization. And this is particularly important when the uh, organization is going through uh, changes, perhaps uh, managing through uh, the various phases of the nuclear life cycle. And the classic example is to go from an operations period or through to uh, uh, decommissioning and uh, the change in uh, human resource needs and the uh, organizational mandate and business functions may uh, dramatically alter the competency profile requirements. The uh, corollary of that is a bottom-up approach uh, to uh, understanding the position requirements in an organization. And this is a more uh, conventional view of uh, job uh, descriptions and the competency profiles needed. Uh, these two methodologies, of course, um, need to be used in tandem. And uh, the understanding of knowledge or loss risk assessment and the proactive management of it uh, really is uh, best achieved by uh, a combined strategy. So we help member states understand the application of these methodologies and their uh, benefits uh, over time. So in summary, the IEA uh, NCAN program 
continues to uh, expand both in scope and uh, you know products and services. We're uh, happy to see over the last few years a very uh, significant increase in member state awareness of knowledge management issues and um, the application of uh, KM practices uh, becoming quite widespread and growing. There is clearly uh, a much better understanding of the core issues and the fact that knowledge management is very cross-cutting and uh, also within the agency uh, here. Um, there are many important links between knowledge management and overall sustainability of nuclear technology and um, I think more and more member states are, uh, uh, in particular senior management, are understanding this as a strategic issue, they're identifying where their critical issues are and exploring how to uh, proactively manage or mitigate them. We're seeing regulators uh, across uh, many member states, um, in particular developed countries, take uh, a very uh, strong interest in implementing KM programs and uh, effectively uh, begin to understand that they have a, an oversight role um, to ensure their uh, national um, mandate and uh, in particular licensed facilities uh, understand their obligations to, to manage the competencies around uh, nuclear technology over the entire life cycle and uh, to implement more uh, specific and uh, uh, targeted measures within their licensing activities to ensure that uh, knowledge management risks and issues are, are effectively dealt with. And finally, um, we see need for uh, continued uh, support and collaboration from leading member states for our program. NKM section, our uh, overall uh, budget and uh, resourcing hasn't really changed in the last five years, so we're, we're uh, stretched thin, so to speak, and uh, we very much benefit from uh, member states that step up and provide uh, cost-free experts and other uh, in-kind or extra-budgetary contributions to support our program. Uh, we're, we're very grateful for that and uh, we... Uh this is um, broadly a um, an overview of uh, all activities that uh, we conduct uh, in the nuclear knowledge management section within these uh, three uh, main uh, programmatic areas of uh, nuclear education, uh, methodological aspects uh, and technological uh, um, tools. Um, as you s have seen, it really it's really a broad program that covers and addresses uh, several of the key elements that uh, we are addressing in this course. So if you have any question in particular in relation to any of these, don't hesitate to ask. And as I said, you can also find on CLP for net reference to individual publications that uh, uh, have been issued uh, within the program of the section. So any questions? at this stage.